Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. A little bit of a chit chat in regards to some questions and what you're going to do with your EGR, uh, what you are and aren't going to do and why and all these sorts of things. Just answer a few various questions we've had over time. Um, first thing I'd like to say, pretty well it's all there. If you search our channel, see at the bottom there, what you're probably on now, YouTube, 4 before Diesel. Watch all those videos till the end and you'll probably have all the information that you're after by doing that research. Um, if you don't, you might cover it in this one, but you're not gonna get everyone, everything in this one that's in the other ones. Okay, so let's first talk about this EGR plate with a seven mil hole. This is by far the most popular way of reducing the flow, the e EGR flow reduction, EGR reduction plate, or EGR flow reduction plate, whatever you wanna call it. Where do you get those? Get them on eBay, this is, this is the seller right here. These are the ones you want quality, right? Okay, let's have a look if we get the light right. That's the one, all right? So search those terms, EGR, blanking plate, Toyota, D4D, 1KD FTV, 3 liter. This is for the 1KD FTV, right? We're not talking about anything else. We're specifically talking 1KD here. Again, like always, some of the information, there they are, k on, right? k on 4x4, right? So 8,000 sales, 99.9% .9 positive feedback. Awesome feedback, awesome people, awesome company. You can't be 100% because there's just those few people out there that you can just, you can't make everyone happy. Uh, fortunately, on our eBay, I think it's 100%. But anyway, that's another story because um, we don't bother selling anything on eBay. We're not there to sell stuff. So let's get that out of the picture. We don't need that. Um, firstly, I'd like to just touch on the legal side of it. Now, I'm not a lawyer or a solicitor or a... Um, whatever you want to call it, anything like it, okay? So I'm not going to tell you whether it's legal or not. I'm telling you information about what works, what we've seen, what people do, how things work. It's up to you to work out in your state or country whether it's legal or not or whether you choose to do that. I can tell you where to get it. I can tell you it's 10 bucks. I can tell you it's a cheap solution. I can tell you that it works. I can tell you that it's quality. I can tell you you're supporting an awesome company. Geez, a whole $10, you know, how exciting. After eBay fees, mail and everything like that, how much do you think that can be made out of that? But anyway, support the guys because they're an awesome company. May as well send it to them. Australian company, Australian made. Where's my Australian flag? So didn't get that ready. Okay, legal side of it. Depending what state you're in in Australia, I can tell you this. If you have your EGR valve shut off, it's illegal, of course, right? I can tell you the other thing. If an EGR system worked the way it was designed to, it helps to reduce nitrogen oxides, which is not good for cancer, heart attack, strokes, and this sort of thing. So it's kind of a good thing. It's kind of a good idea, but it's not a good idea. Other ways of doing it, you know, like a, a heat pump or something, or filtering the exhaust gases, having a good outcome without anything detrimental would be good. The only thing detrimental about this is the whole EGR system, okay? It, feeding soot through your engine and with a mix of the oil from the crankcase ventilation system is what helps it to cake up okay so legal side of it if you shut it off it's definitely illegal now in my opinion from reading um, the information provided by the states reducing the flow with a hole like this where it's still operational depending on the wording used it's very gray area some states may be oh no that's still illegal some might not be some sort of gray area you know you need to you know if you want to worry about it i know a lot of people said i'm not worried i don't care whatever so i'm giving you the information to cover the people that don't care if you're worried about it go and see your lawyer pay them the money to work out and i'll tell you what they're going to say they're going to say don't do it because they're going to give you the safe information every time that's their job okay now that we've covered the legal side of it some people are saying by stopping or reducing the flow of the EGR, it stops the vehicle from warming up pathetic okay on that i just want to say you just got to be careful who you listen to there's a lot of people out there with information on the internet youtube channels facebook groups pages whatever people have just got no idea there's so many people even tradesmen i, I don't know how i mean look i suppose you can be qualified and get a piece of paper even though you're not so intelligent unfortunately everyone's different okay just be careful who you listen to this plate it's got nothing to do with it warming up. It's not going to make, I'm not going to say it's not going to make any difference. It might make a slightest point, 0.001%. It's got nothing to do with the vehicle warming up. It's going to warm up just the same. The engine and the coolant and the thermostat is 99.9% .9 of the control on that situation. So if you hear someone that says something like that, it's absolute rubbish. You just stop watching their videos, stop reading their information. You're best off if you see rubbish, 
And if you think I'm rubbish, just block me, block my channel, stop watching it. If you find that it's good information, they're the ones you subscribe to, they're the ones you turn the bell on, and they're the ones you listen to when it comes through and get yourself educated, okay? So warm up, what a load of rubbish, okay? Fuel use, another load of rubbish, okay? 99.9% is .9 coming through your airbox. Fuel use is gonna be better running on cool, filtered air. That's why they put a filter there and an intercooler, right? Do you think it's gonna run better, it'd be more efficient running on hot exhaust gases? Mate, if it was if it was more efficient on exhaust gases, they wouldn't have an intercooler there, because the hot air would be hot already, right? But it's not hot enough to do the nitrogen oxide job. That's why they added in there, but I've still got the intercooler, because that's what works better. It's gonna be more efficient, less carbon monoxide and every other emission by running it through the air filter, the intercooler, that's the most efficient way. Hot air doesn't work, okay? Hot air works to cool the combustion. That's basically, in other words, making a crap combustion so it stays cooler to reduce nitrogen oxides, okay? And I'm not saying whether this system, the standard EJR system, works or not. I'm not telling you whether it works or not. I'm jury's out on that. I'm not really even gonna go into it. I can tell you it definitely works to cake up your intake and make a mess of things. We don't like it. Okay, fuel use, so a load of rubbish. Fuel use is gonna be better with it shut off or with this restricted, okay? Um, is it legal? Well, you know, we already talked about that, didn't we? Is it legal? You have to figure that one out. Every state and territory and country is different. Um, most people seem to not care. There's thousands and thousands, I'd go as far as to say, tens of thousands of people, even in Australia, that have got the EJAR valves shut off or one of these plates installed, okay? So, your choice. Um, longevity of the engine, well, of course it's going to last longer without an EJR system. You don't want to be pumping, you know, it's got an air filter there to stop dust and things like that. Even for vehicles that are on-road, right, it needs an air filter, right? So off-road, dust, that's worse, yeah, okay. But on-road, you still need an air filter. You don't take it out when you're on-road, do you? So how would feeding soot, dirty black soot, through uh, the EJR system back into your intake, unfiltered, be any good for the engine? It's a no-brainer. Exactly. So... Oh, don't ask me the questions. Think about it, okay? Please watch the other videos, watch this video, watch the other videos, watch it to the end, you'll get the information. Now, is it legal? Well, like I said, you know, that's for you to figure out. Thousands of people have had this solution for many years. That's this solution here. Heaps of people go and get tunes and stuff like that. Let me ask you this question. So you go and get a tune and you get your EJR shot off included in that, whatever. Um, do you reckon that um, that tune is going to, you know, it's going to warm up even quicker? <laughs> um, fuel use, what do you reckon is going to happen there? They'll tell you it's going to use less, but you know, have a think about that. If the engine's going to make more power, how does it do it? Does it make it out of thin air? Anyway, you've got to figure out these are the uncommon common sense stop questions you've got to ask yourself. Does that make sense? Okay, runaway. There's also, you know, the old runaway diesel thing where, okay, for example, let's use an example here. Um, a turbo seal in the turbo went and the whole intake was full of oil and the engine runs on oil, right? Diesel's oil. So the engine just keeps going and it revs, revs and it run away, right? It doesn't happen in these cars, okay? And it's got nothing to do with the EJR system or the plate. It's not going to make any difference whatsoever, okay? So no runaways and it's just not even related. If you, again, I'll say it again, if you're listening to these people that talk rubbish, um, can you tell them I'm a bit sick of it, you know, that you see the other video I released yesterday, you know, carrying on about the um, changing the nozzles. You haven't go and watch that one, you know, have a laugh, you know. I was just like, I was like, do I really have to say this, you know? Anyway, okay, run away, not gonna happen, nothing to do with it. Stop worrying about these things. Stop listening to other people. Careful what you read. Get out of those groups, get off those pages. See, they're the groups and pages you want, right? Okay, the information is accurate. It's backed up by experience. And let's say, you know, hopefully, I've got a brain and I can sort of figure out what you know what's really happening because the problem you got is some people I don't know if they poison their brain with drugs and alcohol too much I think we all did that didn't we but not drugs of course no no we never touch that that's illegal okay but you know a lot of people had a drink or you know whatever some people had too much you know too much of the old whatever it is and I think they fried their brains and maybe they're the ones that come up with these silly scenarios like an EJR shut off has got anything to do with a runaway like hello now what you need to do you need to do some research general research like search what is a PCV system or a crankcase ventilation system how does it work 
watch those videos, you know, general information, not specific to this. Understand the crankcase ventilation system and why that puts that tiny amount of oil in the intake. And as the engine gets older, there's going to be a little bit more. Understand the EGR system. It's putting exhaust gases back into your intake on any vehicle. You can't do this on a diesel. Diesels are doing it. Until they put Add Blue there to do that treatment instead of the EGR, this is what's happening. So I'd suggest maybe Add Blue is possibly a better system, but I'm not going to go out and say that because how long has it been around and in in these passenger vehicles and that? No, nah, you know, like no experience, little experience on it, and it hasn't been around long enough. In trucks, and it's probably been around a while and it works and all that. A few comments there, people go, yep, that's it. Run it in the truck, no drums and all that. That's probably good. Awesome. Okay. EGR, exhaust gas free circulation, is crap. It's a bad idea. Do it on a petrol engine because it hasn't got that soot in the fuel. You know, you get a little bit of mess in the intake, but nothing compared to what you get in a diesel. Now, why has it become more of a problem lately? Well, as diesels get newer, they need to meet stricter emissions, which means more bigger EGR, bigger pipes, more flow, and more of that exhaust soot. You would just be amazed if you knew how much of your engine was running on exhaust gases, you know what I mean? So these plates, that information, that's 1KD specific. This is the gasket. People have asked, where do I put the gasket? Well, if you were to install one of these, and we don't do that, but if you were to install one of these yourself, because that's what you do, you get on eBay. Did I show you eBay? K on 4 by 4 We did that at the start, didn't we? That's where you get your plate, 10 bucks. If you were to install it, what you would do is you pull your EJR cooler back and you've got just enough room to get it off the studs without removing the fuel pipes. And the gasket, this gasket is the gasket. It'll be stuck against the head, the face of the head. And the plate would just go over the top of it and the EJR cooler goes over the top of that. You don't need an extra gasket. If you're buying the injector kit office and doing the EJR clean and all that sort of thing, whatever, and the, the intake, that sort of thing, um, you'll get at least one of these gaskets in the kit so you can replace it. But if it's stuck against the head and it hasn't moved and you see the side you're looking at looks good, you can just pop the plate in and you won't even use this, okay? Don't, no point making it hard for you by getting that gasket off. Sometimes this black coating sticks to the head and then you'd have to get in there. It's hard to scrape it. If it's stuck there, just leave it there. If it falls off and it's, yeah, just throw it away and put the new one in, right? So that's the deal. Um, you can just send it back. We say, send your old injectors back to us. You get a free contamination check. I've said, talked about that before. Send us back your red caps, your, you know, the crow's foot, the dowel, all the things in the kit that are a lean you're not gonna use again for another five or 10 years. And you can send us back any bits and pieces you don't use, you know what I mean? We'll even put a credit for you for your next parts purchase, parts purchase, whatever. Anyway, so, bada bing, I hope that's explained it for the people that asked those few questions. I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, but go and learn the basics about PCV or crankcase ventilation. Let's not get technical about what you want to call it. It doesn't matter. Crankcase ventilation, positive. PCV is a general term. Let's use that. PCV, go and search that. Search EGR and understand when you've got oil in the intake and you've got exhaust gases where the two come together is the problem. The oil's not the problem, the soot is. Take away the oil, just means the soot keeps going through the engine. Your intake might cake up less, but it's still going through your engine and it'll probably still cake up from what we've seen. And the photos and information, DIYers, other workshops, what everybody's seen, not just us, provide to us, which backs up what we see. Quite often, the catch can and the plate together don't work because you think, yeah, best of both worlds, in theory, but then why is it there's people out there that are saying, hey, I've got both and it's building up. All I can say is maybe what happens is the plate reduces the flow enough and with the catch can not there, the oil going through, keeps it damp and lubricated, kind of almost washing that soot through. But if you reduce the amount of EGR flow with this and the oil by putting a catch can there, then it sort of evens it up and then you get that build up again. So all the cleanest ones we've seen, Butter bing, plate only, there it is, that's the way you want to be. Don't talk to me about catch cans, I don't hate them. Don't hate you or your vehicle if you've got one. It is a waste of money, it is untidy in the way, it can damage the vehicle, it can block up and cause crankcase pressure, the whole reason the crankcase ventilation was there in the first place, cause pressure, popping seals and causing other problems, including damaging the catalytic converter. Anyway, so, butter bing, that's it. Butter boom, subscribe, bell on, thumbs up, Keep watching. Don't worry about what anyone else says. If you don't like what I say, you like what they say. Go over there. Don't try and do both because you're just going to get confused. Okay? You can feel free to ask questions on the comments as well. I don't guarantee that I can answer them there, but I do read them. I skim through and have a read, and I'll, that'll give me ideas for things in the next video. Same with text messages. 
There's the number. Feel free to text me a question. Include your name. You're not going to get much of a response without your name. I want to know who I'm talking to. You know who you're talking to? You're talking to Anthony from 4 Before Diesel, all these Facebook pages. There's his phone number. Just give me your name, a text message, or a comment on somewhere, something. Be nice. You'll get best responses. Happy days. What a wonderful channel. See you guys.